Hello, what we've got here is a quick review of integration by parts, specifically how it can be used to integrate um, uh, inverse trig functions. Um, recall that, first of all, integration by parts is an algorithm that's helping us integrate products of various kinds of functions. So if you see two functions multiplied together, um, and then you ask to integrate, chances are there, there's a good chance that uh, integration by parts would be an effective technique. The problem with this, of course, is we may not see integration by parts intuitively just from looking at this integral because it's the integral of a singular function. As we saw before with the natural log, though, uh, we could just uh, write the arc sine uh, times 1. So 1 is a function of x, and so is the arc sine, and therefore we can then define our u's and our v's. Now, I chose u to be the arc sine instead of letting x, or said instead of letting u equal 1. Um, for multiple reasons. The first reason, though, is I know the derivative of the arc sine. But if I chose v prime to be arc sine, then I would have to anti-differentiate arc sine, which is why we're here in the first place. So the obvious choice is let u equal arc sine, then the derivative of the arc sine, you can either go from memory or from a formula sheet, is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. v prime then is defined as 1, therefore the antiderivative is x, and then using our algorithm for integration by parts, we're going to have u times v subtract, and then I skipped a step here really quick, we're going to have v times u prime, so x times 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared is x over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Now here's a candidate for u substitution. So it might not seem obvious at first, but again, if I look at the derivative of 1 minus x squared, I see that it's 2x, and this is a multiple of that, half of that specifically. So the x dx is going to nicely work out if I do a u substitution. I've already used up u though, so I used w substitution. Uh, so we have w is what's under the radical. Uh, it's going to make it easier to integrate for show. Um, and then when I differentiate that, I get negative 2x dx. So the question is, uh, what does dw equal, or rather, what does dx equal? In this situation, actually, I see x dx, so I solve for x dx, and I find negative one-half dw. So that's the connection between dx and dw. Uh, so I'm going to replace x dx with negative one-half dw, and I'm going to replace the square root of 1 minus x squared with the square root of u. So that's going to reveal the following. Boosh. I say u, but I meant w. Uh, now this is a power function, so I'm going to write it in power form, and the rest is basic integration and some cosmetics. So in the end I have the integral of the arc sine x times the arc sine of x plus and then this which is kinda like the reciprocal of the derivative of the arc sine of x. Um, so anyway there's there it is uh, that's the method. So if you're ever finding yourself at a loss to integrate try integration by parts with a, with a product of one times the function you're going to integrate. Specifically that works well if the function you're trying to integrate is easy to differentiate but not easy to anti-differentiate, then this might be a possible way uh, forward. So, thanks for watching.